Hey, <laughs> this is what I was going to do. Ugh. I remember last time putting my phone up on a, there we go. <laughs> the multi multiple uses for a yoga, a yoga block. So yes, I put my phone up on a yoga block so my head does not block the whole, um, you are here and we have a destination to go to. So very cool. This is me getting all jib jibby. Very cool. All right, people. Happy Mondays. Happy Mondays. Were they the ones that were going to step on you again, or did they? were they the ones who were on the groovy train? I can't quite remember. Good morning, Erin. Look, I'm, I'm raising my mug to you. This is my extra big mug. <laughs> Besides this extra big mug right here, my big Irish face. Um, this is the one that I, I ordered without realizing the volume of it. And I feel, it's so funny, I feel like a little kid with this giant mug. Like, oh my God. And yet I've drank, I already drank a lot of tea in it. So good morning, everybody. This is so funny. I've got my, my new glasses I'm used to using. So, yes, so good morning, AZ Firefly from Arizona. This is early for you. Check me out. Now, mountain time, yeah, two hours. All right, we got it going. I just printed out a new map that shows me the, um, the uh, different time zones because I have clients in all different time zones. And actually, we were just visiting my nephew in Colorado. Um, and so to get better at that for my clients, I love that. And Kimberly in Michigan, and this is where my my musical upbringing goes. Oh, how I wish again I was a Michigan back on the farm. I swear that one's probably from my grandfather, um, who I didn't really know a lot. But, um, you know, we are a musical family. What can I say? So good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Big surprise. Ocean Nana. I love it. Long time no see, huh? So... When you feel better, you do better. On the flip side, when you're not feeling so good, you may not do so good. So coaching-wise and decluttering-wise, I like to help you feel better. Jeremy made the trip was wicked fun. It was very short. Mission accomplished. It was very good. I'm excited to be back home. It is. I won't, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's a stressful time for my state, but I am cautiously hopefully heartfeltly optimistic um, that in a couple of days some of this stress in me and I'll be honest with you it's going to come out it's I'll probably cry regardless um, but in the meantime I am here to help you with clutter and also the internal clutter <laughs> the internal clutter of calming down your nervous system so you can get through the day in a way that feels like you're not going to throw up or just just sit there you know now I get it. I can totally see the parallels in what's going on in the world, but even just for now, for our own sake, let's concentrate on clutter, shall we? Because what we're doing by doing that is we are focusing on something we can control. Now I can't control anybody. I can barely control myself. Have you seen me when I have snacks in front of me? Heck no. <laughs> but what we can control right now is kind of how we feel. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So yes, everybody, let's realize that it is a stressful time for our, our country, but let's focus on clutter right now. Yeah. Okay. So Picky says, yep, I was telling myself to calm down. So here, let me even give you this tool from my toolkit that I will be using a lot in the next 48 to 72 hours. Breathing down calming down. I mean, I do feel a tightness in my chest. I do. I feel a tightness in my chest that I feel is almost attached to my, um, my eye, whatever you call them, where the, where the tears squirt out, my, my tear ducts, you know? So I can tell myself to do this, but I will do things to make myself feel better. I will calm down. I will breathe down. I will turn down the volume on things that I can't control. I have already voted, you guys. I always get a um, a mail-in ballot because my husband and I never know if we're traveling or not, but we think voting is so important. So I have already performed my voting. I have a sign for um, Harris Waltz on my on my um, front stoop there. Um, I have encouraged my nieces and nephews to vote. I have done what I can do. I'm here to help you kind of get through this too, but in the guise of decluttering. You know, because when you're feeling not so good, you're probably not going to do so good. You're not going to make some good choices. 
So let's accentuate. Let's call, let's let's even just focus down. Calm down and focus down. Put the blinders on. Who is a cat? Roby usually comes on. It says Beth blinders. On what we can control, which is the clutter in our house. And there are ways to control the clutter in your brain. Now, I love this. Okay, so Picky says the internal clutter, the long list of things that need to get done. Now, here's a really interesting thing. And Ocean, Ocean Anna will know what I'm talking about. You have an internal list of the long list of things that need to get done. Have you written it down? Now, this is a really interesting thing because up here, when you leave your thoughts up here, they kind of are the running, running like, you know, you know, crazy toddlers running around screaming. If you say to them, you sit down, okay, sit down and calm down. Just give me a minute. What, what's on your list? And you write it down like you're a court reporter. Where's my, um, where's my, oh, I can't find it. Ah, actually, what is that? Oh, that's stuff I need to get. Whatever. It's like you have a steno pad. I have a steno pad. It's just hard to get. And you write down that long list. So write down that long list. Get these things out of your system. Get them out of you. Write whatever comes up, as I like to say, whatever comes up, write it down. Now, I'm probably going to be doing this so, so a lot today where I've just, you know, the fears that I have. If you can get them out of you and articulate them, then you know what you're responding to or reacting to, really. Okay? So if you have a long list of cluttery stuff that needs to get done, take a moment and write it down. Get it all out. Then you see it, and then you can chunk it down. Notice I said calming down, chunking down, quieting down. This is perfect. This is what we do to declutter, and this is a wonderful process to use in other areas of your life. Now, I love it. Rainbow Butterfly says, I was able to get most of my clutter out of my apartment before I left for Arkansas which is great, and I will offer too, is that I was reading Arkansas, and I almost pronounce it Arkansas, because that's how my brain goes. There we go, little black dog helped in a local election, now I'm gardening. Little black dog, I am with you. I think I, I actually have a very light day today. Um, I have very light um, uh, coaching schedule today. So I myself am probably gonna go take a walk. I'm gonna dive into some things. I'm going to focus on other things, okay? Um, I love it. Uh, thank you. Th th thank you. Annoying ASMR. We're going to calm ourselves down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Laura Gibbons Voorhees. I'm having a, long, a hard time making room for my fun things. The to-do list is loud and long. Okay. So get that loud and long list out of you and then turn the page. Who was that? Bob Seeger. Turn the page. Turn the page and write down some of the good stuff. Write down some of the good stuff or start with the good stuff. I mean, I say get, get that list out of you because it will run out. You will get to the end of that list of writing it down. And then when the backseat driver isn't like, and this, and this, and this, and then at a certain point, you know they're just kind of grasping for straws. Then you can be like, okay, what do I want to do that's fun? Laura Gibbons Voorhees, what are three things you like to do of fun? You know, share them here and then we can amplify them. You know, writing things down, calming down and writing down, down, down is a really good thing. Now, there we go. Becky Boomer says, I lose, use a mini legal pad as an ongoing brain dump list. Love it. Keep it in the back of my planner. Awesome. Yes, I use a, a, um, like a digital version of that. I use this thing called Trello. But the same idea is that I have a I have a I have lists of lists of lists. You know what's great about that, though? When it's out of my head. It's like I'm clearing space for my brain to do what it enjoys, which is to be feeling good and, and, and um, having space to create, having space to dream, having space to invent. But when it's all cluttered up with to-dos, you're not going to get it all. You know, it's, it's, it's really hard to be creative when your creative um, surface is cluttered and your brain is your creative surface. When you go and you put the things away that don't matter right then, and you put them somewhere where you know you can ac access them. My creative people, you know what I'm talking about. You know? Um, yeah. There we go. Lord, Lord Gimmon Voorhees says, maybe I need to make my to-do list more manageable on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Use, get a master list. Get all of it out of you. 
make a master list. Get it all out, and it doesn't matter. Notice it's a brain dump. It doesn't matter which one comes first, what, whatever, but then look back on it, and then you can probably categorize your big to-do list, even just as far as rooms in your house. So here's my, here's my list for the kitchen. Let me, that big list, now I'm gonna pull out just kitchen things, and I'm gonna put it under the kitchen list. And then I'm gonna pull out the things for the bathroom, and then I'm gonna pull out the ones, you can organize it, you can chunk it down. And when you chunk it down, that helps it feel more manageable. Because you can only manage a certain amount of things per day, you know? And then you'll have your master list, but that's really to just help you when you say to yourself, okay, I have some time to do some decluttering. What can I do? Boom, you go to your master list and you don't get overwhelmed by it. You say, I'm gonna pick three things off of this big list. Big list, not master list. I'm gonna review that. This big list, This I'm gonna chunk it down and then I'm gonna pull something. Well, I'm gonna be in the kitchen today. What can I do? Three things off of that list. You do those things. You congratulate yourselves and then, Oceana, then you say, okay, on, my book's upside down, on November 4th of 2024, what did I do? Oh, I did those three things. You write down what you did and you congratulate, say, congratulate yourself and then you lather, rinse, repeat. You can also crossing things off. There we go, Carla Jane, hey, nice to see you. I love it, okay? Um, uh, so I love it. Carla says, I have started making my list and crossing things off with a highlighter. Now, I love that because you're seeing your progress. Now, here's a fun thing. Notice that act of highlighting. Now, now that's a really interesting one. I may experiment with that myself because we usually highlight the things we have to do. What I love is you're highlighting the things you have done. You know, what a cool idea. I usually would write a line, like when I'm coaching people, I suggest that they just write a line through them or I do like a very flourishy check mark, like ta-da, I did it. Or I scribble it out if I didn't something want it, but I also document it and I also write it down in my book, you know? So notice, I love that, okay? Once it's written down, as Becky Boomer says, I can move on and I check it twice a day. Because those ideas you have in your head, they are good ideas. When you do the things, when the things that are on your list are done, ostensibly, you feel, in theory, you feel better, right? Now, Debbie says, worked hard on Saturday, decluttering kitchen flat surfaces, swept, mopped, and it feels good. I feel good. And when you feel good, you do good. When you're not feeling good, you're probably not doing well either. Okay? Now, I love it. This is funny. Luann Ward. I don't know. We might have crossed each other's paths on um, Rehoboth uh, Avenue. She says, I left the red state of Texas for three weeks. I spent two weeks in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. The, the blue, I feel so much calmer now. Yeah. I say that because this past weekend, my husband and I were in Colorado with my nephew. But prior to that, we were in Rehoboth too because that's where my husband grew up and that's where we got married. But notice getting yourself into a, an environment where you feel safe, when you feel calm, when you don't feel like your life is threatened. And I say this, I say this because your nervous system is in a fight or flight and it's fighting or flighting for its life. When you can feel better, you can then do better. Okay? Yeah. Becky Boomer, I love it. You know? Okay. There we go. Yeah, dynamite. We were just talking about this. Ocean Anna. Dynamite says, when overwhelmed and feeling guilt. Two things we don't want to do, but it happens. I only write a list, done list, a ta-da list, to remind myself I have done something. You know? Yeah. And I love it, Carla Jane, totally. My ADD doctor told me to put a notepad next to my bed, write things down, and your ADD mind will calm down. Yeah, because your ADD mind, let's give, let's give a shout out to the ADD mind because I have it in my family. I know I have a percentage of it, but I have found a way to work with my brain as opposed to fighting against it. Your ADD mind is the human brain doing what it does best, which is thinking which is coming up with ideas. Oh, but how about this? And then this, and this, this, this. But your body, your, it thinks too fast for the rest of the, the team, okay? So one of the ways that you lovingly slow down 
to hear those good, go, good ideas is by writing it down. You know, you write down that thing, the act of writing again, ocean Anna were, and I were talking about it today on coaching that it was like, um, when you used shorthand, you would just be doing the surface. You were just writing down the words, but you weren't feeling it. When you slow down to write down, you are also calming down your, you're just shifting gears. You're slowing down so you can write down all those good ideas you have, you know, and then let it go over the repeat. Yeah, then you're not a fear. You have the fear of forgetting. I have to keep on reminding myself or I'm going to forget. How about instead of re reminding yourself up here, you write it down, down there, you know? Yes, to-do lists can get daunting. Notice when you feel daunted, overwhelmed. Don't do that. Make a list, glance at it, pull some things out of it, because those are thoughts your brain already had about things to do to help you feel better declutter-wise. Yeah, I write it down to give myself a break. Yeah, that's why your to-do list. But nobody says it has to be done in a day. I have things that have been on my list for years, and they're not all like have to do's. It's like, you know, places I want to visit, food I want to eat, things I want to watch, stuff we have to get done around the house that may cost a lot of money. But getting them out of your head, people, do not underestimate the simple yet powerful power of your hand listening to your head and your heart and writing down the stuff that's in there that will give you the word insight, sight within as to what's going on inside. Okay, Robin, thank you for the rose. Okay, good morning. Yeah, so when you feel better, you will do better. And yeah, we got to do, Let what are you going to do in these next 48 to 72 hours to make yourself feel better? Now, I will, I will share with you that I need to come up with my own list because I am feeling some stress right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be there for other people. I am here for you right now. How can I help you? I am going to breathe down. I am going to calm down. I am going to eat down some healthy foods that are going to make me feel good. I am going to put my foot, feet down on the ground and I'm going to walk. I'm going to take a walk in the, in the woods. I am going to write down those things that my backseat drivers are afraid of. You know? And I am going to calm down and take take care of myself, my fearful animal self that's fearful of its life. And I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm going to look for the good. I'm going to look for where things are going well and not, I'm going to quiet down the fear and I'm going to look for the love. And I say that in a broader context here in the U.S., I'm not going to lie, but I'm also saying that, that that is a daily practice to help you with your clutter. Now, if, if you're like, what is this woman talking about? I totally realize it's been 20 minutes. I haven't even introduced myself. Now, many of you know me, but in case you're just new here and you're like, what the what? Uh, my name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach and here on TikTok and on YouTube and on the internet, Destination Decluttered is me, okay? Destination Decluttered. And the crazy awesome thing is, is that I'm a decluttering life coach. What does that mean? I help people with clutter. Because clutter is physical stuff in your life that makes you not feel good. And when you learn how to, when you learn a process to deal with that, you can use that same process here, you know? And what makes you feel better is going to help you do better, you know? Now, Becky says, I really like that. Calm down the fear, look for the love. Yes, to me, I always use, and this is another thing about me if we haven't met, I often will um, use the road trip reference or, or, you know, sitting in a car. So think about it. You're driving in the car and you hear a song that makes you feel bad, that makes you feel scared, that makes you feel, you know, crappy, whatever. Turn down the volume on the stuff that makes you feel crappy. Change the station. When you feel, when I'm hearing I'm so unlovable by the Smiths, I feel sad. When I hear body up, you know, September by Earth, Wind & Fire, I feel better. And when I feel better, I do better. I look and I'm like, I, I nod and smile at somebody else. I can help them. I'm going to pick up their stuff. When I'm feeling crappy and all by myself, I'll be like, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever. And I don't have the opportunity to connect and help with other people. You know? Oh, yeah. Laura says, we are driving back from Georgia in the memorial service yesterday. Uh-huh. Today's list, get home. But I will say this, Laura, 
Get home in a way that feels good to you. Yeah, stop to pee when you need to pee. Get out every few hours and stretch. Now, I don't know where, if you're in Georgia, I don't know where you're driving to, but take, feel good in the journey. You know? Yeah. Um, feel good. Feel good body-wise, stretch-wise, pee-wise, you know, mind-wise. Listen to some good songs, things that make you feel good. If you get inspirations, write them down. Yeah. Music can influence so much, and really, music... It's the music can make you feel something, and that's the magic of music. The notes can make you feel something, but man, oh man, Ashevitz, do we also respond to the words. And music is really just thoughts put to, to notes. Now, I say this as a music lover all my life. You hear me, I'm quoting music all the time. I'm singing poorly, but I'm singing. And um, my husband is a musician, so I know the power of music. You have the power to change the station. If you're listening to something that doesn't make you feel good, you can turn and find another station that makes you feel better. Okay? And I will say to me, hope and love and connection, those are the things that allow the human race to evolve and move on. So I look for the union label. I look for that stuff. I do. And when I look for it, I find it. And when I find it, I feel better. When I feel better, I do better. But there is that fear. There is that fear always there. So calm down the fears and um, feel better, do better. Okay. Now, Judy's asking a lovely practical question that I love because I love practicality as well as heart. That's why I'm a decluttering coach, but I'm a decluttering life coach. Do you have different sections of the notebook, things to do around the house and other lists? Oh, my gosh. If Judy, if you knew this about me, and I'll, I am a list maker. I have lists of lists. So, But I, I use this to my advantage. I don't overwhelm myself with it. The reason I have many lists is because chunking down the gigantic list of the pretty much the thoughts in my head allows me to calm down. So, yes, I would say this. In the, in the, under the umbrella of, um, of decluttering that we're working on, yeah, different sections of the house. So if you have your workbook, your, you know, 35 cent notebook, as I like to say, I'm almost, it's so funny, I realize I have like two pages left of this one, and then I'm changing, and it's around here because I just got home. I'm going to start a new chapter. Let's all start a new chapter, shall we? Um, start a, you know, these pages, this is why I say use an inexpensive 35 cent, $2 notebook versus buying something that's overly organized in a way that may not work for your brain. I say this, open up a notebook, put kitchen on one page, bathroom, cellar, cellar, see, I'm from New England, bedroom, living room, Put a header, this is a category, and then walk into that room and just take note. If you were like on one of those HGTV shows, write down the things that you would like to do in each one of those rooms. Now, yeah, sure, if you want to overwhelm yourself, you're going to put it in a giant, you know, CVS, CVS receipt tape of a list. But um, if you don't want to overwhelm yourself, look at each one of those pages as a chunk. Chunk it down. Chunk it down and you... You can, when things are chunked down, you're more easily able to do them. It's like eating. You got a whole box of cereal, you eat it by one spoonful. You go, you want to run the Boston Marathon, or you want to walk across the U.S., one step. Chunk it down. Yeah, and Laura Gibbon Voorhees, I need to make my declutter soundtrack of happy tunes. Here, let me help you with this. Um, even if you don't have... Now, this would be my decluttering um, playlist. Even if you don't have Spotify, I'm pretty sure you can go on to Spotify and Google destination decluttered, even, or not Google, like, you know, search on Spotify for destination decluttered. See what comes up. And the reason I say that is my musician husband, you know me, I've been doing these TikTok lives for like a year and a half now, almost two years, and I'm often bursting out into song. But some of the songs can help you get through and they're, they're good ones. So I had him. I wrote down the list of songs that made me feel good. I have a good feel-good list of songs on my, on my phone that I listen to when I want to feel inspired and motivated. But if you go to Spotify and you, and you search 
Destination Decluttered, the list of songs that help me are there. That might give you a start to, to see if any of these help you. Okay. All righty. There we go. Um, I love it, Laura. The fact that I am part of your journey home from such a tough thing and in between two places, going from your dad's, going from your dad's um, memorial service to uh, your home that you want to make comfy. I'm honored to be part of that journey with you because that's why I show up to do the destination decluttering. You know, I could be sitting here on my own. I could be, you know, scrolling on TikTok like I do quite a bit and there's nothing wrong with that. No shame. But I'm here for each one of you. You are all between two points, where you are and where you want to be. And I just encourage you that um, we are all humans and we're all on that journey together. Each one of us is in a different car and we're all on a slightly different roads to getting to different way, but we're all doing that. So I'm here to help you make it easy, you know? Um, so yeah, I love it. T. Kelly says, I totally agree. I just went through a lot of paperwork yesterday and garbage bag feels like 10 pounds. Awesome. Talk about the lightness you feel when you're not weighed down with clutter. Me and my daughter spend pick a day and start and support and push through it by calling one another through the day. Instead of pushing, how about encouraging? Pushing is one thing, but being drawn towards wanting to do something, but encouraging something. You got this. You asked for it, you got it, Toyota. I got this, you got this. We can do this. You know? You can do it. We can do it. I am here for you, and you are here for me. Because we are all intertwined. We are all, we are family. We are a hu human beings. If you look at us like as animals, we are a pack creature. You leave something out, you leave a human out without anybody else, it will die. We need community. We need each other. We are interconnected on every level, you know? Now, there we go. I love it. T. Kelly says, I use Receipt Pal and I take pictures of receipts and earn gift cards. That's cool. I love it. Clara says, manage to help daughter tidy up rooms and have a bag of stuffed animals and toys for donating. I lo love it. <laughs> Aaron, Toyota, let's go places. I forgot you were a Toyota person. That's wicked funny. Um, yes. So do not overwhelm yourself by making it by writing your to-do list on the back of a CVS receipt. Okay? Get yourself get yourself a notebook. Write it down. I will I will say with you. So I have that kind of digital um digital version of that even for the stuff cuz I've decluttered so I don't have that but like I've got like my miscellaneous list my my catch-all list the one that I kind of throw things there temporarily before I decide where they go. And then I have a list of things to buy or rent, etc. Then I have travel ideas. Then I have money. Then I have growing my business. Then I have one called future stuff, which has like one thing on it. Make a plan to go to Longwood Gardens in November and December. I'm going to pull that over to my more recent things because it's now November. And now I'm going to delete that list because everything's a future list. Okay. Then I've got clothing I want to buy. Then I've got random. Now notice how some of these are random, but one of them is like, Pictures of our license plates, so when I go to do things. Then I've got books I want to read. And then I've got health, like random things about my health, about how my mother had cataracts, and then age-related macular degeneration, and my Grammy hickey had pupillary, yeah, she had something. Pupillary distance. See, all these random things go through your head? Write them down. And don't, but just don't set it and forget it, okay? When you, your brain is so cool. Don't hate your brain. Love your brain. Your brain has the solutions to the things that are bum bumming you out because your brain, and maybe your soul, I don't know, your soul part of your brain, part of your brain just wants you to feel better. Okay? Think about that. You have things that are making you not feel good. Your brain can come is coming up with the solutions to it. But... The, the, the fearful brain of, no, it's all blah, it's all awful. That usually has the Mr. Microphone in the back seat. It's like a little kid. Hey, pretty lady, we'll be back to pick you up later. I'm totally getting one of those. I'm telling my husband, I'm going to write it off as a business expense. You heard me, right? My tax person, when you see a Mr. Microphone on my receipts of business receipts, my Mr. Microphone is totally going to be on there. <laughs> Now, I love it. So Dr. Mimi says there is a cool app for to-do lists called Do It Tomorrow, and it's free. I know that there's a bunch of apps out there. I say that myself. My online list 
is Trello. I use it because I learned to use it once and it and I I offer to you there are so many. Do not overwhelm yourself with the tools to do it. Even starting simple, you know, writing it down is better than not writing it down. Getting the words and thoughts out of your head and out of your heart and onto paper. This is why we used to write, you know, Dear Diary back in the day, trying to make sense of what's going on in your internal world. By doing that, you are required to articulate what you are feeling into words that you can write down that make sense to you. When you do that, you better understand what is dry, what is motivating you. Is it fear or love? Now, I say this because I'm talking kind of all over the place today, but it's all about the same thing. You are a driver in a car called your life. You got to wherever you're parked right now, in front of your phone, wherever you are, in your house, where you live, how old you are. You got here by doing certain things on the road back then. Now, we're all where we are. If you dig where you are, awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. But if there's something that bugs you about where you are now, and this is where I am, and like this is why I show up in clutter, because I know clutter bugs people. Clutter bugs me, but so I've learned how, I've, I've taught myself how to manage it, and then I teach other people how to manage it. And in a way that doesn't take over your life, if anything, it makes room for your life. That's why I'm a decluttering life coach, you know? Now, I say this to you because we're all here. Now, this is why I call my coaching Destination Decluttered. Now, don't get freaked out by this next question. Do not overwhelm yourself with this. But I'm asking your brain because then your brain is going to come up with ideas. And then, boy, when your idea brain starts talking, your backseat driver is going to be like, yeah, no. Yeah, but no. You're here. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? What's your destination? Now, that could be like your life, but this is why I call it destination decluttered. Destination decluttered. If you get overwhelmed by where do I want my life to be, because I used to get overwhelmed by that, so I never asked myself. And then, boy, did my life reflect it. When I started asking myself, what do I want my life to, li to feel like and look like and do all the fun things, and I started quieting down the backseat drivers and encouraging myself, I have changed my life. 180 degrees from where it was a few decades ago. And the more I do this, the better it gets. Yeah, yeah. So Judy, don't overthink it. Yeah, so those lists are digital for me. In a notebook, would I put them in different sections? Yeah, I would just seriously, it can be as easy as taking your notebook and, and writing a different page. Now, notice how I even use these, um, uh, what do you call them? Spiral bound notebooks. I do this so I can tear the pages out. I can relist them because a to-do list is just a temporary list. So yeah, just chunk it down by room. See what comes up, write it down, you know, <laughs> you know, and I love it. T. Kelly is buying some folders. I love that auto titles, you know, notice, notice the, um, the categorizing. You are creating a category, you know. Now, Carla Jane, who's one of my clients who wants everybody to have coaching, I love this. She says, pack up and go with, with us on this journey. One-on-one -on -one coaching will change your entire life. It is true. You know? Yeah. Now, let me see. Raisa Lee says, okay, I missed it. I apologize. We're just clicking. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, TikTok didn't show me some of these things. I don't mean to, um, to miss some people's uh, things, you know? So where is it? Uh, Picky is asking, where does cleaning fit in with decluttering? I say de I say cleaning happens after decluttering. Because when you are decluttering, you're going to generate some dust and stuff like that. Cleaning is something easy that we know we can do. Maybe we're not so thrilled about it. Decluttering is um, different. Decluttering is deciding. Decluttering is deciding what you want and what you don't want. And if you make the decluttering, if you declutter well, you'll have fewer things to clean. Okay? Um, Clara, okay, got that. Do, do, do. Okay. Raisa Lee, I seem to have forgotten, I, or, or I, I did not see your, your comment, but I love the fact that, um, okay, a baby step is a step. Yes. So, you know, ovens may vary. Raisa Lee, I don't know what's up with your oven. I hope it's okay. For some reason, TikTok is not showing it to me. 
You see, now T. Kelly is saying, as far as a destination, I just want my home to be comfortable when I walk into my home and then it functions easier. Hell yeah. Yeah. How does it look? How does it function? How does it feel? Those of you who have coached with me, you know that those are the three things. Those are like the bases we always hit to get the, what is that thing? It's the grand, the, the, the home run. <laughs> it is comical when I try to talk sports. It is, you know? So notice when you have a destination. This is what we do. You write down your destination. Oceanana, I don't know if you're still here, but I forgot to tell you know, to mention this. Writing down your destination. Write down where you want to go. I want to drive from Pennsylvania to Key West. Or how about this? To Yeah, to Key West. Why not? Um, how do I get there? Okay, so you say, I want a home, my home to be comfortable when I walk into it, and then it functions easier. Okay, so T. Kelly, right now, what you're indicating right now is that um, you have some things going on in your house, clutter-wise and probably otherwise, that make it not comfortable. So look around and see the things that are making it not comfortable. And here's the thing, too. Write down the things that aren't working for you. Get those out of your head as well. Get, get what's in your heart and in your head down on paper via your hand. Write these things down. Because when you do that, you will get insight as to what the solution is. You are showing yourself the stuff that bugs you. And when you resolve that, if you got a problem, you'll all solve it. Check out the groove while my DJ revolves it. Yeah, how about we chunk it down room by one room? How do I want this room to be and feel? What do I need to do in this room to do it? Carla knows. She's like my, my, uh, my co-pilot as I'm driving this coaching bus. But... You can do something about it. And one of the things to know is what it is. Look at me. Like, what it is. What is it? What is it? What is it that's bugging you? Write it down, and then you know what it is, and so you can create a solution for it. So I say this as a decluttering life coach. I see this as a human on the planet trying to make it through the next couple of days, and the rest of my life is when you can identify what is bugging you. I was a, li a little bit crabby when, I, when we were in Colorado this past Saturday, and I realized because my body was not feeling good. I was feeling a little bit off because of jet lag, because of um, the, the different uh, you know elevations. Um, I was feeling fat. I was feeling fat and bloaty and old. And... That made me not feel good. And so then I was crabby to my husband and then I was beating myself up inside. But then I said, I, I realized what was going on. I said, okay, well, what can I do to make myself feel better physically? Strangely enough, it was the opposite. I went and took a walk on a treadmill, took a shower. Making yourself feel better makes yourself feel better. But sometimes you don't know what to do to make yourself feel better. So you write down, you get in touch with what is bugging you out. Bugging you out? I think bumming you up, bugging you or bumming you up, both of them, you know, yeah, Robin said altitude sickness, yeah, I was just wicked tired, feeling crabby, you know, I'm just trying to be real with you guys, because I don't want to come in being like, my life is perfect, and here, buy my product, no, but what I'm saying is that when, it, when I was attuned to what was bumming me out, it had nothing to do with my husband, it had all to do with my physical body, and my nervous system not feeling good, you know, now T. Kelly says my dining room table was looking like a desk, which bugged me. So my sideboard buffet is now a desk because it's hidden with doors. And now I know my important paperwork is in there now. Yeah, notice we all have the solutions to what's bugging us, in us. What I do as a coach, because I coach people one-on-one, -on -one, um, paid coaching, people all over the country, is I sit with you to listen for and help you realize that you've got the music in you, like Kiki D said. You have the answers in you. And to, to give yourself the time and the space to quiet down that yelling, scared backseat driver and to listen to what you want and to listen to you, your better self, your higher self, your encouraging, loving self who only wa it wants you to have the best life possible before you die. We got to quiet down those backseat drivers, those scared little kids 
those scared people who are afraid of giving up power on you. Because your backseat drivers are saying something to, to encourage you to drive in a direction they want you to go in. They're doing it by fear. They're doing it by scaring you. They're, 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 you know, just being mean to you and beating you up. When you know that and recognize that and get some distance from it, you also realize that you have your co-pilot in you. Now, who's your co-pilot? Now, I always, I always use the word co-pilot because I remember once being in a um, gift shop on one of my road trips and somebody had one of those license plates that said, like, God is my co-pilot. So call your co-pilot God. Call your co-pilot the universe. Call your co-pilot me, that wacky sidekick who is sitting in the passenger seat. All I do is sit here in your passenger seat with 100% belief and love and trust and fun. And I turn to you and I say, all right, so where are we going? And then I don't tell you where to go. I listen for you to say, well, this is where I want to go. Like me, I'd be like, I want to drive to the beach. You may want to drive to the mountains. It's not about me. It's about you. You want to drive to the mountains? Cool. Now we have a destination. Now we know how to get there. I have the map. I can help you. I am a guide. I help you get from here to here. You know? So notice these things clutter-wise. You know, I can't do it. I've always been cluttered. You've always been cluttered. You, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, you can't do this. You're too old. You're too weak. You know, you never stick with it. You've got ADHD, you know, you know, you, you do it. And then it never worked again. Never worked before. How does it feel when you listen to those backseat drivers? Feels kind of crappy, doesn't it? Yeah. When you feel crappy, you're probably not, you're going to be like, you're right. Okay. Well, I just keep on doing the same old thing. Doing the same old thing is like putting your, um, it's like spinning your wheels, or it's like driving in circles. You know, you're going down the same old road. You're really not getting anywhere. You're adding miles to your car, like your, your odometer. The days are going by, but you're still doing the same thing. But you're not going where you were. In order to get to someplace different, you need to do something different. You know? Now, I love this. Little Black Dog says, I can't afford to hire you right now, but it's on my list for next year. I love it. I will be here next year. Yes. There we go. But in the meantime, I'm going to like the heck out of your lives. Little black dog, I am right here for you. And I know that my coaching, since I charge money for it, some people cannot afford it. It's okay. I will offer to you that um, Carla has sent me money to take a $20 discount off of coaching from anybody who joins up in the next whatever. Um, and so there is money. But what I want to share with you too, you know, it's, yeah, I know all your backseat drivers, Judy, because they're my backseat drivers too. They're everybody's backseat drivers. And if you had to name, you know who's everybody's backseat driver? Mine might be Little Beth. Yours might be Little Judy. Yours might be Little Black Dog. Little, 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 little Black Dog, little puppy. All of our backseat drivers are fear. Fear. You know? Yeah. Self-care for the win. Yeah, do you know you're basically teaching cognitive behavioral therapy concepts? Yep, I do. But those words bore me, so I like to think of it as a road trip. And I'm the driver, and I'm quieting down the backseat driver so I can move forward in a way that feels good. You know? But fear, fear is our backseat driver. Fear of, of, of not getting to where we are, fear of something different. Fear of doing something that we got in trouble for the last time, so I'm not doing that again. Fear, 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 fear. But when you realize your backseat driver is just a scared little kid in a car seat who just doesn't know that it can be really cool to go somewhere else because they're so familiar with going through the McDonald's drive through and getting nuggets, you know? And then what I say is, you may have been listening to your backseat driver all the time. I know I did. You guys, I only thought there was one voice in my head. I thought it would, and it was that fearful backseat driver because that's how I grew up and that's how we're wired as humans. Until I had this glimmer. Only occasionally would my backseat, would my, my co-pilot to be like, I'm not dead yet, like I'm still here. And then she would whisper to me, what would happen if you did that? Just try it, what could happen? And not in like a getting in trouble way, but I think of the things that I was afraid of. But I felt the fear, but it was something I still, but there was something in me that really wanted it, really wanted to do it. Go, go say hi to that person. Go walk into the college radio station. 
say no to that person so that you have the opportunity to later say yes to that person. You have your own co-pilot voice in you. I call it the universe. I call it my soul. I call it my co-pilot because she's just sitting there next to you waiting for you with complete patience. She is not, I mean, she might be like, come on, come on, let's go. Come on, let's get on it. Let's go someplace. Where do you want to go? That anxious, excited, frustration, love of, I just want to help you get to where you want to go. That's why I am often very, um, when I'm doing my coaching and everything, like, and even right now, I want to be like, you guys, it's so much fun once you get on the road. It may be scary at first, but then once you get on it, it feels really good. You know? Yeah, give yourself the thoughts to change the feelings you want to win and live it. Yeah, that's your co-pilot. Your backseat driver says no because they're fear. Your, co your co-pilot says yes in, uh, under love. Love. Love for you to live the life you live that you want to live before you die. Now, the great thing is, is I'm living the life I love. My life that I love may not look like or what be anything you want, but man, do, am I digging what's happening, including my coaching. I truly enjoy what I'm doing. So what do I do? I pretty much every day I show up and do, do a TikTok live. I have my clients. I love it. It makes me feel good to know that what I can do is help other people with something that I used to struggle with and now I'm pretty good at. So I know what it's like, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, so Meredith Albright is saying, my roadblock is wanting to keep things like Halloween costumes and craft supplies um, uh, and uh, for my kids, but they're in their 20s now. Yeah, so here's the thing. This is, this is the sentimental part of us, and this is where our heart gets involved. Not just though it's like, my kids are now 20 years old. I will give them away. Who was that? Not Dr. Spock, Spock. Mr. Spock on Star Trek, I guess. He was very kind of up in the head. We are head and we are heart. That's what makes us humans. We are not robots. So notice that your heart is getting involved. Oh I, oh, I have the habit. You also have a habit. I have the habit of saving these things for my kids. But you're like, wow, they are not, they're not fitting in those things anymore. But it can tug on your heartstrings to realize that they're not that age and they will never be that little again. I was with my nephew this weekend. Oh, my God. He had like a cute little like mustache thing. He's in college. And I remember, and I say, this is, this is, how your heart, your heart makes you feel feelings. I remember when he was this little kid who had an orange nose because he ate so many carrots. I remember when we had a little, um, a little purple plastic fork in our um, silverware drawer here that my sister left once when they visited and we thought, oh, we'll save this for the next time he's here. Well, the next time he was here, he wasn't using that fork anymore. He had grown out of it, you know? So do not be surprised when decluttering brings up emotion when it makes you feel feelings. Now, as you can see, I can talk through this right now. I could, t you know, I could smile about it now, but the time it was terrible, yeah. I can do that because I'm okay feeling the feelings and I'm not shoving them down. I am, I could cry if I wanted to, but um, I know I'm here to help you. So the neat thing is, is I could feel that and it was like a wave on the beach. And then I, walk, I talked through it and I felt that feeling of love for my nephew, no matter what age he is. And I allowed myself to feel it, and then I went, Whoosh. and now I feel better. And I can even sense the difference in my voice, that my eyes, my, my, my feeler, my heart feels different, you know? So you're going to feel feelings when you do some clutter, decluttering, but let me help you with this. There are three levels of clutter. There's surface, there's stored, and there's sentimental, okay? Surface, stored, sentimental. So sentimental, you will get to. That's the one in your heart. But you can even start with your surface stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, one thing at a time. Yeah. Fear of not being good enough. Enough. Enough of that. Okay. Yeah. Good enough compared to what? Compared to who? And then when I say these things, give yourself the space and time to listen for your answer. And then write that down. I'm not good enough. Enough is so ambiguous. Good enough to who, for what? How does my life feel? Now, these are deep questions. If you're somebody who's like, oh, I thought this lady was going to sell me a bunch of clear plastic dividers for my, you know, pantry. I'm not that person. Because I know that when you start to notice the clutter that's in you, also clutters up your house. It's the same concept. 
I like to just share this with you in a way that you actually get to see the visible in outcome and income, but outcome because your house starts to look better when you start to pay attention to what you want and do things to get what you want. Speaking up for what you want and saying no to what you don't want. It's decluttering. I want a clean kitchen counter, so I will take the things. I will spend my time to take the things off the counter and put them away. I don't want more crap in my house, so when I go on trips, I allow myself the opportunity to buy something if I truly, really love it. But if it's just like, well, I guess I could get that, then I don't. I don't waste my time with the stuff in the middle or the stuff that I don't want. I only pay attention to the stuff that makes me feel really good. You know, and starting small with those thoughts. Yeah, G Gila Rio says decluttering is a feeling. You won't know until you do it. Yeah, you know. Yes, backseat drivers from the way people made you feel from long, long ago. Yeah, Oceanana, spot on. Your backseat drivers are things that people probably told you when you were younger, decades younger, and you internalized them and you began to believe them. And then you start saying it to yourself because you're kind of beat them to the punch because they said something to make you feel bad. And you said, oh, don't worry, I'll do it for you. Don't worry, I will make myself feel bad so you don't have to do it. And then you start becoming, then you make decisions based on that crappy feeling. It is never too late to understand that and to decide to do something different. I don't care if you have 50 years ahead of you or 40 or 30 or 10 or two or one. The quality of your life increases when you discover that you, when you love yourself. And I know that sounds abstract and very life coachy, but I would rather have fewer years of better quant quant quality than longer years of not so great. Like I would rather have a couple of good pieces of really good chocolate than like a whole bag of kind of crappy chocolate. Same thing. Now I love it. Rochelle is taking three boxes of Christmas stuff to donate today. I love it. Now, Amber says, my daughter is 18. She tells me I'm a sentimental hoarder. You might be. You might be. You know what that means? So you feel feelings. I love people who feel feelings. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right. Clara says, how do you prevent overwhelm feeling when writing too much down? There's never too much. I say, continue to write it down and get it all out, however long it takes. But then don't get overwhelmed by it. Get it out of you and notice how much was in you. It will feel better once you get it out. There is an end to that list. Don't let the fear of being overwhelmed by the list stop you from making the list. Don't let the fear of feeling a feeling stop you from writing down something that's in you anyway. Once you get that list, then we have something we can work on. This is the fun part. All of this to me is the fun part. When you have that list, then we can look for patterns. We can look for categories. We can look for matchy matchy things like, you know, playing concentration, the concentration game, not, not perfection. Concentration. Oh, wait, that goes in the kitchen. Oh, that's another thing that goes in the kitchen. Oh, that's another thing that goes in the kitchen. Anything else? Oh, that goes in the kitchen too. Cool. We can solve something when you can, when you can articulate it, you can create a solution for it. So don't let the fear of overwhelm stop you from starting the process. Yeah, yeah, compare it to feeling like how others think you should be. You know what? Fuck them. <laughs> you know what? Those people were dealing with their own stuff. You know? Doesn't matter what others think you should be. Who do you want to be? What do you want your home to look like? Let's bring it on back. We can talk, you know, the great thing is we can, this scales, this scales people. We can go from talking in the very abstract, like the life coachy stuff. But then to me, I'm from New England. So I'm always going to be like, okay, this is all nice and well, you know, you woo woo people. But how can we put this into practical use? I show you how to put it into practical use because I want you to learn how to love yourself by decluttering your home. Now, I don't even know if I would like swallow somebody on TikTok who, who kind of said that, how to love yourself, but it is true. Because when you love yourself, you're gonna say yes to things that make you feel good and no to the things that don't. When you love yourself, you're gonna treat yourself kindly. You're not gonna beat yourself up. You're gonna say congratulations on the stuff that you did not you did do, and you're gonna have patience and love for yourself when you didn't, I don't know, you didn't do the things you thought you were gonna do. 
you know? Sci-Fi Nova says, <laughs> Sci-Fi Nova says, I need clear plastic containers for my brain. Sci-Fi Nova, my goal, frankly, is to help you realize that you have much less, fewer things in your brain that need that kind of categorizing, that you need m m much fewer. I'm always doing my, my less and fewers. Um, much fewer uh, clear plastic containers than you think, but you need to declutter first. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Morgan says having pneumonia and not being able to clean is giving me more motivation to clean when I feel better. Yes, because when you feel better, you do better. But if you try to declutter and clean now with pneumonia, not only would the whole process feel crappy, you would actually make yourself feel worse. Okay. Maria, I'm good. It's so hard to start. I've been trying to work on closets that's full of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Total fear of scarcity. Many of us come from scarcity. Many of us are fearful of feeling scarcity again. That fear of not having is causing people to vote against their own self-interests. That fear of lack. But a lot of that is is, is not true. It's a feeling. Do not get me wrong. Feelings are important. But feelings are informed by words. And words can either be facts or they can be something that makes you feel shitty so then you do something shitty. You know? There we go. I love it. So I get two minutes. I just realized it. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Love yourself more than some stuff. So yeah. There we go. Okay. And notice. Notice how many people here, even when I'm missing these um, questions because TikTok likes to hide them on me for some reason. Um, you are not alone. You are not alone. Okay? Um, if you have clutter... So many people in this, this world have clutter. You know why? I could get into it, but I got a minute. You are not alone. You have people here you're connected to. And all we're doing is helping ourselves move forward and doing the best we can with what we have. Okay? So I say this to you as Beth, decluttering life coach, destination decluttered here on TikTok. I will be doing a TikTok live tomorrow. Let me see when that is. Um, if you want to know what it is, actually, sign up for my mailing list. Listen to me. Sign up for my mailing list. Oh, you know what's funny? It's at 7 a.m. tomorrow. I'll share that with you. We're going to start the day early. And, um, oh, you know what? Yeah. So notice. Okay. I love it. Here's the deal. User1622 says, your enthusiasm has totally changed my view of decluttering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Decluttering. Let me just leave you with this one. Decluttering is getting rid of the stuff you don't want anymore. You may have wanted it for a while. You can change your mind in a moment about what you don't want in your life anymore. And if you don't want fear, and if you don't want somebody making you feel crappy, you can choose something else. Decluttering. Get rid of what you don't want and move towards light and love. Feeling what you do want. Okay? Yeah. Um, how to start. Calm your nervous system down. Quiet down. Get out of your brain that is in fight or flight. Calming down your nervous system and amping up the feeling good and the love part. Turn down the fear. Turn up the heart. Turn up the fun. Okay, Maria? I can even tell just by the way you were typing that, that you are in a fight or flight. Kimberly, thank you for the dozen roses. You know? But seriously, this is how it all starts. Getting out of fear and getting into love. This is how it all starts. Getting out of fear and getting into love. Okay, now I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here this week. If you wanna know when, sign up for my free mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com. Um, all right, we did it, you guys. An hour, are you feeling good? I'm feeling good. You can do this, you know? Yeah, Kayla Bear, if I, what if I don't want my BF? Think about that. Declutter what you don't want. It gives you space for what you do want. If I never got divorced the first time, I would never be blissfully, happily married the second time. So I just offer that, okay? Yeah. All right. Okie pause. I'm just going to not throw it in the trash. It makes me feel wasteful. Notice the feeling is wasteful, okay? Um, you don't have to put it in the trash. You can, you can recycle and you can um, donate a lot of stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to be mindful of your time. I'm mindful of my time. I'm here for you. 
you be here for you too, okay? I will see you the next time I do a TikTok live. Bye. I'm like, bye. Did I hit the right button? Bye. There we go.